Cloud Plus. We'll be covering security and recovery. First thing we have on the unit overview is access control, information security, network security, high availability, and recovery. For access control, we're going to be covering authentication, single sign-on, federation. We're also going to be covering role-based, mandatory, and discrepancy access control. First thing we have is authentication. Authentication, there's three parts to authentication. Something you have, something you know, and something you are. Whenever it comes to authentication, something you have will be a device or a card that you have that you use to log on to a server or log on to a network. Something you know is something that you know in your head is something that you're able to provide. And something you are is, has to do with biometrics. It could be fingerprint, retina. Whenever it comes to authentication, you have factors whenever you authenticate. You can either have single factor authentication, which would be a username and password, two factor authentication, which would be a smart card or a token, and then a password or a PIN associated with that. And then three factor authentication would use all three. Whenever, if somebody has a username, password, and a card, that's still two factor authentication. Two factor authentication because two of those are something you know, and one of them is something you have. If you throw in a fingerprint scanner, so you have a fingerprint scanner and a pin, that's still two factor authentication. Something you are and something you know. But if you have a token, a USB chip or a card, and you use that to log in with a pin, and you also have a fingerprint scanner or a retina scanner, then that's three factor authentication. Single sign on. Single sign on is where you have, you're able to log into one server and then you're able to access many servers with it. Whenever you log into Google, you're able to access your G+. On top of G+, you're able to access your, your Gmail and then your G Drive also. So single sign-on lets you log into one, but then access many things. Gmail, G Drive, and G+, they're not on the same server. They're on different servers. They might not even be in the same location. One might be in Seattle, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Atlanta. But because of single sign-on, you're able to log into one and then access all these servers within that company. But for federation, federation is very similar to single sign-on. However, with federation, it allows you to have a shared trust with another company. For instance, you log into Google, you're able to access YouTube, you're able to access Facebook, you're able to access other companies, other organizations with the credentials that you provided to one. You can, if you notice, you're able to log into some sites with say your Facebook account, or you're able to log in with your G Plus account, and so on and so forth. This is what Federation is. This is what Federation allows you to do, to log on to many organizations with one username and password. Keeps everything simple. But one drawback of that is, if somebody knows one of your accounts, username and passwords, well then they're able to log into all your accounts. You gotta remember that whenever it comes to Federation and single sign-on. Role-based access control, RBAC. Role-based access control is mainly used in LDAP functions. LDAP functions like Active Directory. It is where you have permissions granted for users or groups. In Active Directory, if anybody's ever messed with that, you know that you're able to put yourself inside of a group. When you put yourself inside of a group, you're able to access whatever that group has permissions for. For example, you're part of the accounting department. Being part of the accounting department, you're able to access files and folders that are offered with the accounting department. If you're part of the business department, you're able to access files and folders that are with business, but you're not able to access what accounting has because you're part of the business group only. That's where role-based access control takes effect. And mandatory access control is permissions are determined by policy. The policies will be things like local group policies or GPOs that you're able to access these files and folders because the policy says that you can. That says that your group can or that you as an individual can. Most of the time, these are enforced by the operating system itself. Policies have been around since early 90s and they allow people to get onto a computer and access what they need. The reason why you can log into your account and access files and folders on your account is because of the policies. But whenever your significant other or somebody else that shares that computer that you share logs into that local computer, you're not able to access their information, just like how they're not able to access your information. It's all because of mandatory access control. The next one is discrepancy access control. This one is determined by the user itself, by the owner, that you say only I can access this file or folder, that nobody else can access that file or folder. 
The owner is the person that manages the permissions for this access control. It is not controlled by the operating system, it's not controlled by policies, or it's not controlled by groups. It's controlled by the owner itself. These are called access control lists. It is just a list of who has access to the resources. Information security. In information security, we have encryption, symmetric and asymmetric. We also have common ciphers that we're gonna talk about that appear in the cloud. Symmetric encryption allows people to encrypt files or folders so that way only they can see it if they have the key. A program that does this most of the time is PGP. And PGP is a program that lets you create tokens and then assign them to files and folders so that way you who owns the key is able to encrypt it or not. Symmetric encryption has one key and that one key is what encrypts it and decrypts it. Outside of symmetric encryption, you have asymmetric. And asymmetric is two keys. You have a private and a public. Your public is what, what is given to the people out in the cloud, but your private is what you keep. Your private is usually saved on your PC, saved on a, a CAC, a common access card, or it's saved on a thumb drive, a particular type of token that you can purchase online. With asymmetric encryption, the two keys, one encrypts it, the other one decrypts it. If one decrypts it, then the other one will encrypt it. You can't use the exact same key to encrypt it or decrypt it. Whenever you use asymmetric, you're encrypting a file with your private key, you're sending it out to somebody, and then they decrypt it with, their, with the public key from your private key that is offered to them. Most of the time, this key is offered through a GAL, a global address list. Common ciphers, the common ciphers that you have is AES, DES, and RC4. AES is pretty much the lead whenever it comes to encryption. It offers, it's mainly offered with Wi-Fi, and it has 256-bit encryption. There are three types of Wi-Fi that you have, WEP, WPA, and WPA2. AES is the encryption that goes on top of WPA2. It can be used with WPA, but most of the time it's used with WPA2. The next you have is DES. With DES, there are three different types for that. You have DES, 2DES, and 3DES. With DES, it's a 56-bit encryption, 3DES, is 56 plus 56 plus 56, which makes up a total of 168. With three DES, it encrypts it once, and then it reverse encrypts it, and then encrypts it again. So therefore, it is completely encrypted into 168. Three DES and DES are a hash algorithm. And hash, all that really means is that it's going to be encrypted and it's never meant to be de-encrypted. Most logins are done with a hash algorithms whenever it comes to LDAP or Active Directory. RC4. RC4 is a Wi-Fi encryption that's offered with WEP and WPA. It's not offered with WPA2, but it is used for RADIUS, which RADIUS is used for authentication, and it is a 128-bit encryption, but it's old. People can crack that fairly easily. You can Google videos and people crack them in less than a minute.